Hey everybody, two boys, one brain cell, and today we are checking out Killer Mike's Reagan. Ooh. This is a Patreon re request. Our Hell pick. yeah. Excuse me. I love Killer Mike, uh, but I have not heard any of his solo stuff, believe it or not. I've heard him and RTJ, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Though I do, I could watch him talk like on podcasts and stuff just all day. <laughs> he, has, he's, he has such Didn't a great you send speaker. me some of these yeah probably some of them yeah, yeah. like like some of his uh stuff just like breaking whatever down. down yeah yeah and uh he's just really well spoken and I, I like him absolutely dude's awesome let's jump in let's do it to terrorist demands that no concessions policy remains in force in spite of the wildly speculative and false stories about arms for hostages and alleged ransom payments we did not repeat did not trade weapons or anything else for hostages nor will we the ballot of the bullet some freedom or some bullshit will we ever do it bigger just keep settling for little shit we brag on having bread but none of us are bakers we all talk having greens but none of us on acres if none of us on acres and none of us grow wheat then who will feed our people when our people need to eat so it seems our people starve from lack of understanding because all we seem to give them is some balling and some dancing and some talking about our car and imaginary mansions we should be indicted for bullshit we inciting Let children deaf and pretend that it's exciting we are advertisements for agony and pain we exploit the youth we tell them to join the gang we tell them dope stories introduce them to the gang just like i love the north introduced us to cocaine in the 80s when them bricks came on military plane a few months ago i told the american people i did not trade arms for hostages my heart and my best intentions still tell me that's true, but the facts and the evidence tell me it is not. The end of the Reagan era, I'm like Lemma 12 old enough to understand the shit that changed forever. They declared the war on drugs, like a war on terror, but what it really did was let the police terrorize whoever. But mostly black boys, but they would call us niggas, and lay us on our belly while they fingers on their triggers. They boots was on our head, they dogs was on our crotches, and they would beat us up if we had diamonds on our watches, and they would Take our drugs and monies as they pick our pockets. I guess that that's the privilege of policing for some profit. Oh, mm. damn! Spitting facts. Spittin facts. And this is why I love Killer Mike. <laughs> yeah, and he's uh, like just the way he has his lyrics set up too it's oh yeah hard hitting and the flow of it it you can like it's very articulate yeah like you can understand everything that he's saying everything that he's trying to get across and the meaning and the stories behind everything are just so that they, they hit so hard yeah and he's i like too that he's also analyzes kind of um just it's not like a one-sided affair. Right. Like, cause he obviously was talking about earlier, like, uh, you know, I'm assuming like other hip hop artists or rap oh, yeah. talking to you about how they, uh, <clears throat> very materialistic or yeah. stuff like that. Singing mm -hmm. about women, cars, drugs. Oh gangs, yeah. And you could, guns, you could just, right. With, with the video definitely solidifies a lot of that. Like you could tell it's like, Hey, okay. So as a, um, rapper or, person who creates music you have this power this authority and you could really put things out there and change the way that people act or the way people you know think yeah and you have a platform yes and so there there's a lot of music out there that's pushing all these all this nonsense you know drugs gangs um sex women buy spend all your money on vehicle like yeah. expensive vehicles cars or, everything yeah. and it's really that's not how the world works yeah and so he's he's he sees that 
And so he breaks that down a little bit in here, and then he swings over talking about the beginning of the Reagan era with the war on drugs, yep. which was an awful move. Mm-hmm. And uh, like he just said, set off a lot of uh, excuses for racist cops to do, uh, yeah, you know, get away with a lot of a lot of shit. Yeah, it it really, um, but it, brought it, out the worst in the bad cops. Yeah, and I think what I like because he does this a lot in RTJ too. Even though sometimes with our RTJ, there's a little bit of humor. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dropped in, um, but I really like. It's almost like bad religion. Where they don't just go after religion, they break down like more of a like on a society level. Oh yeah, right. And that's almost the same here. Yeah, it, he's like going. He's not going after anything in particular so far. Yeah. It, you, besides maybe Reagan. Well, he hints at, <laughs> he hints at a lot of different things. Yeah, a lot of small things that create the bigger problem. Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and then also dropping in the big problem. Oh yeah, that creates the little problems. Yeah, or the the big problem in the like middle of it that lets it all spiral out of control. Yes. Yes. So let's finish this out and see what happens so far. Absolutely. So good. But thanks to Reaganomics, prison turned to profits. Because free labor's the cornerstone of U.S. economics. Because slavery was abolished unless you are in prison. You think I ambush it and then read the 13th Amendment. Involuntary servitude and slavery, it prohibits. That's why they're giving drug offenders time and double digits. Ronald Reagan was an actor, not at all a factor. Just an employee of the country's real masters. Just like the Bushes, Clinton and Obama. Just another talking head telling lies on teleprompters. If you don't believe the theory, and argue with this logic. Why did Reagan and Obama both go after Gaddafi? We invading sovereign soil, going after oil. Taking countries is a hobby, paid for by the oil lobby. Same as in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I'm a dinner jar, say they coming for Iran. They only love the rich and how they load the pole. If I say any more, they might be at my door. Who the fuck is that? Staring in my window, doing that surveillance on Mr. Michael Rinder. I'm dropping off the grid before they pump the lid. I leave you with four words. I'm glad Reagan did. So, um, I don't know enough about Reagan to really chime in on that stuff at all. From what I've dug up, yeah, it's about about accurate. Okay. Um, Not good then. (laughs) But I really like the parts where he's just like kind of anti-political. Yeah. Where he's like, they're all just puppets. He went after kind of the whole thing. Oh, yeah. He He threw in... All the presidents up to Obama at yeah. that point. And they definitely all have their issues, mm-hmm. each one individually. Yeah. yeah, but but he definitely made it like, oh, there's a figurehead pulling these strings. Like, these guys aren't in control. Yeah. Very interesting. And definitely, uh, one thing that I will say that I really liked was he definitely cued in on the, um, the greed, the corporate greed that corporate goes greed. on in America. Yes. And how money drives everything. Yes. All the way down to the prisons and everything else to drive our system. The wars. The wars. All the for corporate oil. interest. Yeah, the oil, the everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really liked how the first half of the song was more so like going after like a society level. It was almost more like him trying to, I don't know, like factually understand. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like yeah. the way he was breaking things down mm-hmm. piece by piece and setting it up. I love how it just continuously grew up that. To the as high as it can go. Yeah, exactly. So I like that it started with the small and worked its way up. Um, I thought that was really cool. Definitely talking about how this is a problem, that's a problem, that's a problem, that's a problem, and now we're getting into other problems. And it's all kind of just nice, hard hidden. Feels good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the uh huh, I like this. Yeah, I really dig this. Like I said, I I love his flow and just the style that he puts it all together and then the fact that there's always that deeper meaning behind the music. Yeah. Even the uh I I, I first of all, I thought it was pretty funny your uh, shocked face at the uh, glad Reagan's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, damn. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be more so too like he grew up seeing yeah. the results yeah. of the war on drugs yeah. where me and you definitely did not. No. And we grew up around people that idolize Reagan are yes. really yeah. And and like I said, I don't know I don't know a lot about that era. I didn't grow up around that era. I don't I don't I just don't know it. Yeah. And I never well we I up, never personally took the time to go back and study. We both grew up rather rural too. Oh yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. It's really just trying to understand the uh that the whole, divide there the too. Divide. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ratings. Ratings. Ratings, my friend. Ooh. I'm gonna go with a seven point four. Playlist. Mm, I'm gonna go flat seven playlist. Solid. Really enjoyed this song. Very solid. Very solid. Yeah. Um anything else you want to add? No, that's all I got. Shout out to the Patreon for the pick. Gotta love some killer Mike. Absolutely. Um, we're two boys. We've got one brain cell. I'm Joel Norton. That's Charles Beeson. You can vote down in the comments on who gets that brain cell. hundred percent. And until next time, guys, peace out. Peace. <laughs>